emerging from the tanker's body like a golf ball on the fairway. You may have seen these domes and wondered what's inside. They're full of liquefied natural gas, commonly known as LNG, and they're on their way to regions that cannot be reached by pipeline. But why condense natural gas into a liquid, you may ask? Well, in terms of mass, natural gas has a high energy density, and instead of transporting natural gas in its gaseous state, methane can be converted into a liquid form and its volume dramatically reduced. LNG is a, um, is a cooled version of natural gas. It's liquid, and with liquid, um, the, the size of the fluid is much smaller. The gas form of LNG is uh, 600 times bigger, so when it's smaller we can transport it and then regasify it for the market. The process to liquefy and then regasify natural gas is complex and known as an LNG chain. It's complicated even further when the source of the natural gas is not on mainland. This area of the sea can be pretty hazardous, so facilities here have to be built to last. Transporting the natural gas to Darwin involved building one of the world's largest subsea pipelines. Between the offshore facilities and the onshore facilities, we've got our 890 kilometer 42 inch pipeline, subsea pipeline, which is the longest pipeline in the southern hemisphere. The pipe is uh, largely gas components. It's methane, ethane, propane and butane, which are standard hydrocarbons. There is some liquid in the pipe as well. And we also have some contaminants for our process facilities, which we must remove before we can uh, export that product to market. The average tanker, specially insulated to keep the gas below minus 260 degrees, can carry around 3 billion cubic feet of LNG. Global trade in LNG is reaching new highs, with nearly 245 megatons in 2015. Still watching? Perfect. Click here to watch another great video from CNBC International. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.